Hey, Nico Carver from nebulaphotos.com here. It's either really late at night or very early in the morning, depending on how you think about it. It's about 3 a.m., the witching hour. The reason I'm up at this hour is because I really want to capture this new comet that's in the morning sky uh, for us in the northern hemisphere. It's called Comet Neowise, and uh, it has a really long tail. I've seen all these great photos of it online, and of course, I want to take one myself. Um, so. I can't do it from my backyard here in Somerville because there's too many trees and this uh, comet right now is only getting about um, 10 to 12 degrees above the horizon from here. Um, and so I went into my backyard and I did this trick. This is about 10 degrees if you're measuring from the ground. And so I put the ground right here, I looked right here, and this whole uh, area was taken up by uh, trees. And so the comet would really just get above the tree line it wouldn't be a very good shot. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to travel just a little bit um, to get out to the ocean because I'm actually very close to the ocean here and try to shoot it over the ocean. Um, it's predicted to be clear. I haven't actually been out since I woke up, um, but if everything works out you'll be seeing this video and hopefully I'll have the picture of the comet. I'm going to be doing this with a lightweight setup because I don't want to um, have to since I'm going to be traveling I don't and traveling to a new place for me I don't want to bring too much stuff so it's a it's a setup that I can lift with one hand um, it's the Skywatcher Star Adventurer um, a ball head my Canon 5D Mark III and the Rokinon 135 F2 and um, I think this will uh, provide uh, a, a good field of view for the comet a full frame with the 135 millimeter focal length um, so we'll see. Um, this is a very popular star tracker. Uh, it works very well, very reliable. Um, so I have no uh, worries about using this. I don't think the exposures are going to be very long, um, but the reason I'm using a star tracker is because I want to be able to do something like 10 second exposure so I can really capture the comet's tail. And with a 135 millimeter lens, if you go up to 10 seconds, you're going to get streak stars if, you don't, if you're not tracking. So that's why I have the star tracker, but the comet is definitely capturable without a star tracker if you don't have one. So if you don't have one, don't worry about it. Just take your camera out, try to shoot the comet because it is really pretty bright especially for us here in the northern hemisphere where we haven't had anything but pretty dim comets for quite a while. Um, so uh, let's um, get in the car, get out there, and we'll see what we can see. Hopefully no clouds. Okay, I did capture Comet Neowise. Um, sorry I didn't show the setup, but I was rushing to get this set up in time because the uh, sun was rising very quickly when I arrived and I just got off my shots before it got too bright. Um, I was ramping down from three seconds to two seconds to one second exposures because the sky was brightening so much that I wasn't getting any contrast with the comet. Um, but I can see in my live view that I got at least like 15 or 20 shots with the tail. And so hopefully when I stack those, the tail really comes out. And it's a um, beautiful uh, scene here. Uh, we're in Marblehead, Massachusetts uh, with the lighthouse and the boats. Um, so again, I was using the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, my uh, Canon 5D with the 135 millimeter lens. Um, and the reason I picked this location is because uh, looking over the ocean, I have really good horizons for the comet. Um, I'll zoom in here on my live view screen uh, to show you what it looks like uh, just a single exposure and then we'll get back to the house and stack them together and composite it with uh, the landscape here that I, I took shots of as well to make the full picture. Okay here's what a single exposure looked like on the back of the camera and um, you can clearly see the tail uh, right there going straight up. Um, what I am hoping is that this this faint stuff in the tail um, really comes out in stacking even though uh, these pictures are pretty bright and there's not much contrast um, hopefully by stacking them together using the the nucleus of the of the comet as the registration point i can i can bring out a little bit more detail but i'm going to pack up and head home okay so i tried stacking but um didn't really work out that well because due to this really aggressive sky gradient and just the fact that uh, there wasn't much contrast, there were very, very short exposures at one to two seconds, 
and just I only got off like 20 of them. The stacking just really didn't do me any favors and um, was very hard to then combine any result I got from stacking with the foreground. Um, so instead, what I did for this picture is I just picked the best one here, the one where um, it looked the most in focus and everything looked good. And I'll just show you how I process just this single exposure. Um, hopefully, Comet Neowise does stick around uh, and we can and I can do something maybe with my um, Astrotech 60ED at 360 millimeters focal length and really get in there on the comet and its tail um, and uh, do some comet stacking and all of that. And uh, uh, I can make a different video for that more involved process. But I just wanted to show you how to um, how I went around about. Um, uh, editing this sort of astro snapshot, just a single frame, it's it's pretty simple. Um, all I did was I, I wanted a little bit more um, contrast. I wanted to bring out the foreground a little bit, but then also darken the sky so that there's more contrast with the comet and the stars. So first thing I did was um, I'm just going to add a new curves layer, uh, curves adjustment layer, just by clicking on this button up here, over here on the right. And I just want to darken the whole picture a little bit at first. So I'm just going to grab the shadow point, the black point, and bring it over until I like how this looks with the comet and the stars. Um, and I like how that looks with the comet and the stars, but down here in the, the sunrise part, I don't like how dark it gets along the horizon because uh, it looks sort of unnatural. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, click on the adjustment layers mask. Whenever you edit an adjustment layer, it comes with a layer mask already included. I'm just going to grab my gradient tool here and draw a gradient directly on the mask. And the way I'm going to draw this gradient is I don't I, I like how this part of the picture looks, so I want that to stay white, meaning it's going to do the full effect of the curves on the top part of the picture. But then I want it to gradually affect um, the bottom part of the picture less. So I'm going to click up here in the part where I want it to stay white. And then I'm going to draw down like that. Now that I'm seeing it, I think that um, I can add even a little bit more contrast in. So I'm just going to drag that shadow slider over even a little bit more like this. OK, so I'm happy with that. The only other thing that I really want to do is just bring out the this part of the picture a little bit because it it's so dark um, that there's not much of interest in just having a black corner like this. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to duplicate the background layer by pressing Command J on Mac or be Control J on Windows and bringing that above everything else. So this is back to the original picture, um, and I want to. I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask to this layer. So I'll just do that by clicking the layer mask button down here. And if I fill that layer mask with black, so if I just do edit fill with black, you can see then this layer it has no effect. Um, I want just this part of the picture to have an effect. So I'm going to go ahead and use that gradient tool again on this layer mask and just draw a little gradient into the corner like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to brighten up that corner by adding a curves. So I'm just going to press Command M and I'm just going to bring out um, those boats a little bit like that. Okay, so that was before and that's after, right? So it makes a pretty subtle difference, but it just um, adds a little bit more of interest to that corner. And I could, I might play around with that gradient a little bit, um, until I thought that looks right. Okay, there we go. So you can see I just it's just brought in a little bit of a lightening effect on that corner. 
of course, since this is on its own layer, this change, I can always play around with the opacity of that layer um, until it's just how I want it. All right, so here is my final picture. I'm just gonna go ahead and press F twice. And that's my astro snapshot of Comet Neowise over um, the North Atlantic Ocean in Marblehead, Massachusetts. Um, hope you enjoyed this quick video for me. Uh, I just wanted to get something out there to encourage people to go shoot this comet, no matter what kind of equipment that you have. Um, again, if the comet does stick around and we're able to shoot it in the early evening starting next week, um, I'm going to definitely shoot this again at a higher focal length. I'm planning around uh, 300 to 400 millimeters. All right, till next time, this was Nico Carver from nebulaphotos.com.